items, construction projects, factories, agriculture, and more. Primary microplastics are designed to be very small to carry out their intended function, like the microbeads found in exfoliating face washes, toothpaste, and sunscreen. Secondary microplastics, on the other hand, are large plastic materials that break down over time into microplastics. This includes plastic bags, bottles. Microplastics are found in oceans, lakes, waterways, soil, air, and unfortunately, even our food. They're so ubiquitous that there's no part of the globe that does not have microplastics. Recent studies have found microplastics in all parts of the human lung, in maternal and fetal placental tissues, in human breast milk, and in human blood. These tiny bits can get absorbed into the human bloodstream. And while definitive evidence linking microplastic consumption to human health is currently lacking, results from correlative studies suggest that effects of microplastics could include provoking immune and stress responses and inducing reproductive and developmental toxicity. Exposure to microplastics has been linked to neurological conditions, poor cardiometabolic health, and fertility issues. They can tr trigger oxidative stress, disrupt metabolism, interfere with gut microflora and gastrointestinal functions, and disrupt hepatic, cardiopulmonary, and immune systems and degrade reproductive health. The good news is there are ways we can mitigate the problem. This includes reducing plastic use, promoting proper disposal and recycling of plastic waste, developing innovative technologies for capturing and removing microplastics from the environment, raising public awareness, and and implementing effective regulations and policies. Now, here are nine ways. So first, reduce your plastic use. Limit the use of single-use plastics. Carry your own reusable bags to avoid buying food that comes in excessive plastic packaging. And choose organic clothes. Synthet synthetic clothing, such as polyester, is a significant tr contributor of microplastics. Opt for clothes made from organic materials like cotton instead. Change your laundry habits. Washing synthetic clothes, clothes releases microplastics into waterways. Consider using a washing bag designed to catch microfibers. Avoid plastic in cosmetics. Many personal care products contain microbeads, a type of microplastic. Choose plastic-free cosmetics. Be mindful of food and drink. Some research indicates plastic bottled water may be a significant source of microplastics. Consider carrying a reusable steel or glass bottle. Also reduce shellfish consumption as they are known to accumulate microplastics. You want to use safe kitchen practices. Don't microwave food in plastic containers as heat can release harmful chemicals. Use stainless steel or cast iron instead of nonstick pans. Speaking of the kitchen, let's filter our tap water. A 2019 analysis revealed that plastic fibers are in nearly 95% of samples of U.S. tap water. Consider using an NSF certified water filter. Regularly dust and vacuum. Regular cleaning can help reduce your exposure. And finally, use public or alternative transportation. Car tires are a significant source of microplastics. Using public transportation or alternative modes like cycling can help reduce the source. As a society, we can also help reduce demand for plastic products and make available alternatives that are economically accessible and at scale and provide adequate waste and recycling facilities. So there you have it. Microplastics are a global issue that affects us all. But by understanding the problem and taking action, we can help mitigate their impact. Remember, remember every little bit helps. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more environmental insights. And please comment on this video and whether the new format that we're we're doing videos in is to your liking. Until next time,